Hi there! Welcome to our channel Skyjet Wings. Now, let's start. In March 2024, over the Baltic Sea, a Swedish Gripen E cuts through frozen air at Mach 1.2, while below an American F-35 squadron runs a routine patrol, the crown jewel of a trillion-dollar air power doctrine, humming along exactly as planned, until the Gripen pilot advances the throttle. No missiles, no radar tricks, no stealth theater, just raw engine output. The jet surges forward, punching past Mach 1.5 in seconds, and on the F-35 pilot screens, the uncomfortable truth appears. They can't keep up. Not because the Gripen is stealthier, not because it has better sensors, but because its engine, a heavily re-engineered F-414 variant, shaped by Sweden's obsession with efficiency and power density, just exposed a flaw baked into modern air combat thinking. The F-35 was designed to win the first shot in a stealth-dominated battle space, but once detection happens, and today, with infrared search and track, passive sensors, and shared targeting data, detection is increasingly inevitable. Physics takes over. Thrust matters. Acceleration matters. Energy recovery matters. The Gripen's engine produces roughly 22,000 pounds of thrust, pushing a jet that weighs barely 16,000 pounds empty, giving it a thrust-to-weight ratio north of 1.3 in combat configuration, compared to the F-35A struggling to stay below one when fully loaded. That means faster climbs, harder acceleration, tighter maneuvering, and something stealth alone can't buy, the ability to dictate when to disengage and when to re-engage. And then there's the quiet part no one likes to say out loud, the cost. Lower fuel burn, simpler maintenance, Modular parts swapped on dispersed runways instead of climate-controlled hangars. An engine that doesn't just win fights, but sustains air power day after day without bleeding national budgets dry. Sweden, a country that hasn't fought a war in over 200 years, built this not to project power globally, but to survive against larger forces indefinitely. And that mindset produced a brutal insight now rippling through defense planning rooms, Stealth isn't obsolete, but it's no longer enough. The future belongs to fighters that combine adequate stealth with overwhelming, efficient power, and that's why next-generation programs are quietly pivoting towards adaptive engines and sustained performance. The F-35 didn't fail, but its era of unquestioned dominance may be shorter than advertised, because over the Baltic Sea, this wasn't a dogfight, it was a warning delivered at mock speed. The Gripen E burns 4,700 pounds of fuel per flight hour. The F-35A burns 11,500. Same mission, same sky. That's 2.4 times more fuel just to stay airborne. Now scale it. An Air Force operating 88 fighters burns hundreds of thousands of extra pounds of fuel every month with the F-35. Millions per year, billions over a service life, spent flying the same missions. That isn't a cost issue, it's a strategic weakness. This is why smaller nations keep choosing the Gripen. Not because it's cheaper to buy, but because it's affordable to operate for decades. That efficiency comes from an engine philosophy rooted in Rolls-Royce fuel efficiency DNA, refined through Swedish systems engineering and pushed to the limit in the Gripen E. And here's the shocker. The Gripen E can supercruise at Mach 1.1 with a full combat load while burning less fuel than an F-35 flying subsonic. The F-35 can't do that. Too much drag, not enough thrust margin. This isn't about stealth versus stealth, it's about endurance versus exhaustion. And in a long war, endurance wins. Modern air combat isn't about dogfights at 500 feet anymore, it's about positioning getting to the fight first, staying longer, and controlling the engagement envelope. If you can supercruise, you dictate range and force the enemy on your timeline. The F-35 depends on stealth to get close undetected, but stealth is a probability, not a guarantee. When advanced sensors start detecting low observable aircraft at longer ranges, that advantage fades. The Gripen doesn't wait for permission, it just goes faster, while the F-35 is still burning afterburner fuel just to reach supersonic speed. That's not a spec sheet win, that's a combat reality. The real shift 
happens on the ground. The Gripen's F414G engine is fully modular and can be swapped in under an hour, with total aircraft downtime under two hours. The F-35's F-135 requires specialized facilities and takes 12 to 16 hours just to remove and replace. Even more telling, the F-414G stays in service about 4,100 flight hours before removal, nearly double the F-135. That means more sorties, less downtime, and higher sustained combat power. This isn't theory, Brazil proved it. Operating in Amazon heat, coastal salt air, and high altitude conditions, Brazil chose the Gripen not for stealth or sensors, but for operational sustainability. The F414G passed extreme environment testing. The F135 struggled in sustained hot, humid conditions. In modern air warfare, sustainability isn't logistics, it's strategy. They needed fighters they could actually keep flying for 30 years without building billion-dollar support infrastructure around them. That's why the Czech Republic is negotiating for 24 Gripens. Same logic. They want jets their own crews can maintain with existing facilities, not aircraft that require permanent American contractor presence. This is the export market reality keeping Lockheed Martin executives awake at night. Countries are choosing an older airframe with a better engine over a newer airframe with a maintenance-intensive one. Because in real military operations, availability beats capability. The best fighter in the world is useless if it's in the hangar 60% of the time. And this is where the affordability crisis hits. Defense contractors don't like to say it out loud, but many countries can no longer afford jets they can't afford to fly. The F-35 program has delivered over a thousand aircraft, yet operating costs are forcing air forces to cut flight hours. Norway reduced F-35 flying by roughly 30% in 2024 due to budget pressure. Australia is struggling to meet readiness targets as maintenance costs exceed projections. Jets sitting in hangars not because they're broken, but because flying them is too expensive. Meanwhile, Sweden flies Gripens around 200 hours per pilot per year, sustaining full tempo training, mission-capable rates above 90%, and real combat readiness. The difference isn't stealth or sensors, it's the engine, built for sustained operations over decades, not peak performance on a spec sheet. And this is why the future is shifting. High-performance aircraft that can't be affordably operated aren't assets, they're liabilities. Rolls-Royce already sees what's coming. Their next-generation engine for Britain's Tempest program aims for 25% more thrust with similar efficiency. Using adaptive cycles, variable fan technology, advanced materials, and AI-driven maintenance. Here's the part that matters most. It's being designed with Swedish input. The lesson has been learned. Endurance wins wars, not marketing. Sweden is now joining the Tempest program, bringing decades of grip and experience, especially in engine integration and sustainment, to Britain's next fighter. While the U.S. builds NGAD around extreme adaptive cycle engines, the British-Swedish approach with Rolls-Royce follows a different lesson. Efficiency and reliability win wars, not peak brochure performance. Sweden proved this by taking a GE engine core and turning it into a strategic weapon through philosophy, not brute force. You don't need the most powerful engine. You need the smartest one. This is why it matters. The F-35 will dominate the opening phase of a conflict when stealth matters most. But in a long war, where logistics, sortie generation, and maintenance decide outcomes, the Gripen model wins. Five sorties a day instead of two, operations from highways instead of hangars, engines that stay on the jet twice as long. That's what makes the Pentagon nervous. Not because Gripen is better at everything, but because it's better at what actually matters when wars last months, not days.